Hi, this is Scott, Kilo Sierra 6, Delta Alpha Yankee, and this is another Front Seat Friday episode. Uh, I didn't do one last week, and this will probably be maybe an every other week sort of thing. Um, but the whole intent of this series is just to kind of do channel updates and cover small topics that don't really warrant a standalone video in and of themselves. For today, I've got three things to talk about. Uh, the first being that the You Need Com Gear Now series is done. Uh, all six parts are done, and for the last two parts, part five and part six, those, I, I admittedly, I do know those went pretty darn long. I labored whether or not to, to split them into different parts. I went ahead and went with the last two being part five being an hour and part six being 55 minutes, but that's not an indication of things to come. I'm not going to be, you know, starting to do, you know, Dan Carlin hardcore history stuff where we do four hour videos. I, I realize you can only hold people's attention for so long, no matter how charming you are. Um, so I'm going to get back to doing the stuff I was doing before with review videos being 25 to 30 minutes and other topic videos being, you know, anywhere from five to 20 minutes. Uh, but, you know, I'll try to make them into a smaller bite sized morsels for you to consume. Um, but it is kind of nice to have the series done and now I can kind of have a little freedom and be able to move around on my topics just a little bit and get some variety going. Uh, heaven knows I, I got a ton of topics to choose from. A lot of those coming from the comments section and feedback that I get from you guys. So uh, again, I very much appreciate that. So we will uh, be getting back to some radio reviews and some other stuff here very, very soon. Um, but I, I hope the series proves useful. Uh, if you have somebody that you're, you know, trying to get involved with radio or convince them that they need to pay attention to their comm gear needs. I, I hope it proves useful in that respect because man, the thing that started this off in the very beginning, uh, the world situation has not changed. In fact, it's probably gotten a good deal worse, especially in light of what happened with the Nord Stream 1 and 2 pipelines. Uh, sabotage that only a tier 1 military can pull off, that's a little hard to hide. Um, nothing good coming from that, but uh, enough on enough on that gloomy nonsense. Um, but part six of that series covered accessories, and I talked a lot about pouches. It was originally supposed to be a couple of weeks ago when I did the uh, radio pouch flash sale, and I did have some people that missed that, and they were asking already, hey, are you going to be running that ever again? And so I went ahead and decided, hey, since we just did a video kind of you know, talking a bit about the radio pouches, uh, and I needed to do a flash sale this weekend, decided, fine, let's go ahead and uh, just retread that, and recycle it, and we are doing the uh, radio pouch flash sale once again this weekend, so all radio pouches are 25% off, um, so if you're looking to grab a pouch, there you go. Uh, yeah, it probably will be a while before we run that again, but we're always doing sales, uh, so you never know. Um, now, Getting to the main thing that I wanted to talk about today, I know a lot of you have been tracking with the GMRS repeater um, project that I've been doing, and it's sort of now come to an end. Uh, everything is in place. I did a video a while back talking about how the repeater was up and ready for use, and it, it was, and although I had coordinated with other repeater operators in the area, we did have one person that was operating on 462.725, and although we were on different PL tones, and I had actually coordinated with this guy, uh, he was complaining that our repeater was in some way interfering with his repeater operations, so it was decided, not by me, but I don't care, um, but it was decided that we needed to go with different uh, different frequency sets for our repeater. But while we were up there working on the on the repeater and changing the, uh, the frequency set, we did a couple of things. Um, I say we, I mostly stood around and watched and ate payday bars and drank Dr. or uh, uh, Mountain Dew. But um, while we were up there, uh, we did reprogram repeater number one. There's Clue. Uh, we reprogrammed repeater number one from 725 down to, and here's, and I'll provide this in from these details in the, in the video description, but we changed it from 462.725 to now repeater number one is 462.700 on receive, and that is a PL tone of 103.5 on receive. It is 467.700 on transmit with a PL tone of 103.5 on transmit. That's repeater one. But you see, we also just happen to have an identical Motorola repeater up there. So we went ahead and said, why not? Repeater number two is 
462.675 on receive with a PL tone of 103.5 and 467.675 with a PL tone of 103.5 on transmit. Hope I got that right. Like I said, if I didn't, the, the actual details are going to be in the video description. But we have not one but two repeaters now. Uh, additionally, um, we had gotten some fantastic performance off of the previous setup. And in fact, I had, I had done a pinned post in the uh, comments section on the GMRS repeater video. And I mentioned there that uh, we had done some, re some testing, some signal testing, and I was talking to somebody all the way out to 112 miles, although he was only on five watts. He did have a 5 8 wave antenna on his truck, but I had, I had readable comms with him at 112 miles, and I got another contact with him at 120, but he was going up another, another hill. Of course, if he had, had he worked that hill for a while, maybe gotten up on top, taken a stationary position, I'm pretty sure we would add clear comms at 120 miles. Later, another test was done that I wasn't involved in, and that they had clear comms all the way out to southern Merced County, which is 100, 110, 120 miles away. So the thing had some reach in its previous state, but we have since improved that. Um, rather than going with the other antenna, uh, it was decided, let's go ahead and mount a brand new antenna that had a much higher gain, by the way. Uh, rather than have that just at the top of the roof line of the repeater building, let's go ahead and put that on, I believe it was a 35 or 40 foot tower. It's all the way at the very top. So that's going to increase that range even more because although we the repeater site is at the top of a mountain, there were some small obstacles that, that were kind of interfering with the performance down into the valley. So I'm happy to report that the 700 repeater uh, has excellent valley-wide coverage. Down in the valley floor, it's, it's night and day what it was before uh, in its previous state where it was pretty good. It's, uh, it's really good now. But what ev what's even better is a couple of guys went up and they kind of drove the signal by driving around uh, Kings Canyon National Park. And they drove most of the surface streets, went to all the trailheads, all the major locations in Kings County National Park, and they didn't find a bad spot anywhere. They found a little diminished performance here and there, but that thing was excellent. It exceeds expectations, leaps and bounds. And that's repeater one. Repeater two, the 675 repeater, that antenna is a little bit lower on the tower. It's a different type of antenna. And the intent there is more towards the southern area, and that would be Sequoia National Park, which is south of Kings Canyon National, or Kings Canyon National Park. They, they both butt up against each other, but the Sequoia National Park is to the south of that area. And we're hoping, uh, we haven't done full testing on that, but the re the results so far are pretty good. Uh, coverage is pretty good. It's a little bit less than the 700 down in the valley, but we think that up in Sequoia National Park, the coverage is going to be excellent. So if you're visiting the Central California region and you're visiting Kings Canyon National Park or Sequoia National Park, excellent GMRS repeater coverage there. And as far as just covering the rest of the uh, San Joaquin Valley, I'm going to go out on a limb and say Probably the best GMRS repeater system in the Central California area, if not most of the state. And we're pretty proud of that fact. So um, all of the information, if you're interested, you can find it on mygmrs.com or .net, whichever one it is. And of course, repeater book. And like I said, the details will be uh, in the video description. Open for use by all licensed operators. I've also got some pretty cool ham stuff up there as well. So either way, whatever radio system you're, you're using, uh, Tulare County Amateur Radio Club has got you covered pretty well in this area. So with that, uh, I think I've talked enough for a Front Seat Friday. Uh, I want to wish everybody a wonderful weekend, a wonderful day. Uh, this is Scott, Kilo Sierra 6, Delta Alpha Yankee in Northeast Visalia because I'm in front of the shop. Take it easy.